Now, just to, uh, as an example, as a, as a start on in here, to see the evolution of the things, pretty much due to more and more, you would believe that moving forward, we become more secure. Actually moving forward, for a lot of reasons, we become less secure. So even though the technology has evolved, we've been always like uh, behind the curve, trying to catch up with what happens, trying to always improve our security mechanisms, but we've always been behind the curve. And that's unfortunately normal based on the protocols, flows, the internet design, and, and pretty much that's it. Either way, so due to, for example, nowadays due to more and more unsecured devices being connected to the internet, so the internet of things, we're gonna see in here exactly just an example of how DDoS evolved from what used to be uh, like megs or tens, hundreds of megs years ago to now be up to terabytes per second. Because having a lot of unsecured devices to the internet connected, they easily become targets for the attackers. They, they, those, those become botnets, which in the end is gonna, when, if you own, if, a, if an attacker owns uh, hundreds or uh, tens or hundreds of thousands of, of botnets in the internet, is gonna easily and instantly launch any kind of DDoS attack to uh, whoever uh, he pleases to. So let's see a couple of uh, uh, those three attacks, what happened. So there's the evolution of it and also exactly uh, how those attacks have been successful back and forth. So the first one was back in 2013, where, where it was, let's say at that point, advertised as uh, the world's biggest DDoS attack that almost broke the internet. So that was 2013. Uh, I'm using this, the, the Hacker News website is pretty good to keep up with the latest news. And it says here that a massive 300 gigabits per second was thrown against the internet blacklist maintainer spam house. So back in 2013, a huge, the biggest DDoS attack was this one, which was ever seen, 300 gigs per second. So let's see if they stayed in here a bit on how this worked. This worked against, against based on DNS amplification. And let's see if they stayed in here other technical details. Otherwise, I'm explaining what happened. Yeah, they don't exactly state, uh, they don't state exactly how it worked, um, if it was a... Uh, amplification or actually just a reflection attack. I think this was just a reflection attack. So what happened again, um, it was this attack and most, most of the today's well-known amplification reflection attacks are based on DNS and or NTP and are actually based on some vulnerabilities in the, the design of those uh, protocols. Which as I was saying, well, the internet or the community of security people try to fix that up, but has not been widely implemented. So that's why we're not yet secure. So what happens is, is the same kind of attack. The attacker has pretty much uh, spoofed and sent a large amount of DNS requests to what I call open recursive resolvers. So it's pretty much an open DNS server on the internet. And pretty much those uh, it says here that there are as many as 25 million of this open recursive resolvers at the disposal of the attackers. You can imagine, I mean, that was at that point, you can imagine what this means to have available for you 25 million recursive resolvers available on the, on the internet. So just with one query to those resolvers, you're gonna end up sending back to the victim 25 million replies. So imagine what happens is that you are going to end up so very simple, right? You, you have 25 million. This is the attacker here on the left side. The attacker, uh, let's make this red clearly, the attacker, let's say. So the attacker. We have the victim, the green one, somewhere on the left side in here, the victim. The victim being green. So victim. I would say this was uh, mostly, you can uh, go and read some more details about it. This was mostly a reflection attack, not really an amplification attack. And then we have those here on the right side, those 25 million of open recursive resolvers. So here on this black box, we have 25 million, 25 million of 
servers that are open DNS recursive resolvers. So what happens is the attacker is going to send, it's enough to send one packet to each of those 25 million. So it's going to end up saying, sending 25 million requests. And of course, those requests are not going to come from the attacker from one source because you're going to say, how can that guy, what kind of a computer that, that the attacker has that he can generate 25 million requests? You can imagine that those requests actually come from botnets that are controlled by the attacker. But each of those requests is going to have the source IP, the source IP to be spoofed, to be the IP of the victim. So what happens is that instantly, just like that, the victim gets flooded with 25 million replies. Because the source IP of the attack was spoofed when those servers reply to the attacker, they actually reply to the victim. So just like that, 25 uh, replies to the victim. You can imagine what that means, both bandwidth-wise, so, uh, volume-wise, and connection-wise. So that was declared the biggest at that point, 300 gigs per second. Now moving forward, if we look at the next one, let's see, this was a real amplification attack, actually. The next one, which is the NTP attack from 2014. Now, so the concept was the same. So when I'm spoofing the, the victim's source, I'm sending some NTP queries, and then the servers are going to reply to the victim because I spoofed their sources. But this was an amplification attack which made use of, a, let's say, well-known flow or weakness in NTP which is called in here the, let's see if they speak about it. So this was 400 gigs per second, was clearly bigger than 300 gigs. There we go, the spoofed UDP packet from the attacker, which had the spoof source, was amplified 206 times larger than the request by exploding manlist command vulnerability on the open NTPD servers. So what happens is that this is the real amplification attack. So what happens is that the query, the request goes from the attacker. So now the attacker here on the left side, the attacker sends that NTP query, that NTP man list command, the NTP man list command, the man list command to open NTP servers, NTP servers. And he, of course, we know he spoofs the source of the attacker and this NTP server is going to reply back to the victim with a reply, the victim. But now the difference is that this is going to be the reply. The difference is that the request was very simple. This manless command, what happened is that it used to pretty much ask the server, this manless command does ask the server, hey, give me the, the let's say, uh, last, I think, a couple of hundreds of, of clients that connected to you, give me that list. So you can imagine that this query is very small, the malice command, while the reply is a huge amount of data traffic coming back to the victim. So it's a small query, give me that list of, of, of connections, and clearly the reply is very, very, very big. So this is the amplification attack. And I think they stayed in here exactly... Um, what the man list command does, uh, it's how many servers, it's how many, the his, how, he's going to ask for about a history, the man list, let's look it up. Yeah, so you can look it up in more details, what the man list command does is I was saying is going to ask the NTP server for a list, man list, for a list of uh, foo connected. So as you can see, it means that an attack of one gigs, so one gig of request to the NTP servers is going to generate 200 gigs of reply. So that's the amplification. The query uh, amount is going to be one gig, gig, the reply is going to be 200 gigs. And that was the biggest at that point. Then moving forward in 2016, we came up with the next big one, which was 612, 602 gigabits per second. This was again, I think, DNS amplification. Uh, let's confirm in here, it was 602 gigs and it was based on, let's see, so it's done against BBC Global website and Donald Trump's website. Um, it was 
I'm sure this was done based on DNS again, you can look it up. So it does again a DNS amplification. Now they made use actually of Amazon Web Services servers that employ a large number of automated detection and mitigation techniques. So somehow, you know, somehow connected uh, with Amazon. Uh, you can go ahead and read some more about this attack. And of course, the latest and greatest one, which exceeded pretty much all expectations, was this one, which was uh, from IoT devices. So this attack from 2016, it exceeded 1.2 terabits per second. So it's, let's say, statistically speaking, it was based on 152,000, 152, uh, let's say, botnets. Uh, smart devices, IoT devices attached to the internet, which they got infected by a malware called, uh, which is called in here, they got infected by a malware which is called, I think they still in here, the name of the malware, uh, Mirai, they don't stay in here anyways. So those got infected easily by a, a known malware, uh, Mirai. And what happened is likewise, uh, those botnets were used to generate a DDoS attack, which ended up being more than one terabit per second. So as I was saying, moving forward, it doesn't look good. It actually looks uh, worse. And just to uh, end this, um, as I was saying, uh, and nowadays, if you think that oh, well, it's, it's difficult to you know, uh, grab together a set of tools, it's difficult to, let's say, if you want to attack someone, it's difficult to end up uh, you know, having a lot of botnets uh, alongside that you, have, uh, you can use to launch the attacks. The problem is that nowadays we have something which is called malware as a service, which is not only tied to malware, it's tied in general to any kind of attacks. So what happens is that there are specific, let's say, companies to call it that way from the, uh, from the dark web, which what happens is that you get in contact with those, uh, with those inst institutions to call it that way. And if you look here on the, on the top right side, what happens, you pay them, clearly the, the bigger the target is, the, the more money you pay. But what ends up happening is that they almost like guarantee the success of whatever the exploit or whatever the DDoS attack you're trying to launch against your victim. And fun enough, if you look in here on the top, uh, on the top right side, you can even, they're going to have provide technical support. So you paid for something, it has to work. If you're not happy, it didn't work. You got to contact them back and saying, hey, it didn't work. Make this work. I want my attack to be functional. And of course, it even they get discounts. So like tell the password black hole and get 5% discounts on the first order. So clearly moving forward, it doesn't look good um, because it's gonna be easier and easier for uh, somebody to be able to attack you uh, just like that. Buying the service from, from the dark web or pretty much, uh, pretty much contacting well-known hackers, which they have a lot of botnets and they can instantly uh, attack any victim uh, in the internet.